Come on, if you love the Lord in this place today, come on and lift up your hands. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, it was great to see everybody out in the house of God today. I want to also say hello to all of our family that's tuned in online as well, wherever you are connecting with us at. We're just so glad uh, to have you here in the house of God. And, and uh, uh, Bishop would be excited. I see a man with a Barry Sanders uh, jersey on here today, cheering for the Detroit Lions. You're already setting the atmosphere in here today. <laughs> well, listen, uh, today we, uh, we have some, some special guests with us. Uh, they are the founders of Faith Christian Center here in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> I actually got saved in their church in August of 1995. My mother had, first of all, started attending the church, and uh, I watched uh, I watched her uh, uh, break, receive breakthrough after going through a divorce. Uh, I watched God break depression off of her life, and uh, I started to see a change in my mom that got my attention. Most men uh, don't so much listen to what's said; we watch you know, what, what's happening. And I saw a change in my mother that got my attention. And so I started attending initially uh, just because I wanted to go to the club uh, at the end of the week. And I knew I had to go to church in order for my mom to even be okay with that. But after a while, what happened is that that word started getting sown on the inside of my heart. And slowly but surely, I started to feel convicted about my life, about the life that I was living and the choices that I was making. And I, know, I remember what I wore the day that I walked down the aisle. We were there at the East Nevada location, and I told the Lord I'm coming down here one time, and I'm, I'm not going to be back. I'm not going to, you know, be uh, 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 living a double life. I'm giving my all to you, and I want to serve you the rest of my days. And so I started growing tremendously in the faith. After two years, I felt like I was called to Bible school. Uh, two years after that, uh, I had the, had the privilege of coming on staff there at Word of Faith. And uh, 2000, I met Pastor Erica. Uh, she ended up at the church there, and uh, all heaven stopped when I seen her. <laughs> and, uh, but these two individuals have made a personal impact upon uh, my life, and I will forever uh, be grateful uh, for that. Thankful for the opportunity in sending me to a warm, warm weather climate uh, to suffer uh, here for the Lord but they have impacted people all across the world not just in Michigan not just in the United States of America all across the world this is the first black man I've ever met that's been to Iceland in the Iceland I've never met anybody else that's been to Iceland but God uses Bishop all around the world to plant Bible schools, uh, to open up churches. Most of the impact, we, we won't even know about it until we get to heaven because of how many people have been touched by their ministry. And it's an honor to have them here today. It's an honor to be able to show them how much we appreciate the seed that was sown in them planting this church here back in 1997. So let's do this. One of our code of values is honor here at Faith Christian Center. And so let's give a big, warm Faith Christian Center welcome today to Bishop and Pastor Deborah Butler. <laughs> God, thank you. Thank you for all the love and all the prayers. We're so blessed to be here and to be with you and to see the work that the Lord started so long ago. It's still growing. And um, God loves us so much that he makes sure we have whatever we need. Amen? Amen. So just continue to, to grow in the things of God and um, flourish and to shine for Jesus because he loves us so much that he's going he's gonna to back up everything that you do in his name. Amen. Amen. So thank you, and I'm not going to take much more of his time. God loves you. I love you too. Married 
be 49 years in May. He still, when I see her, makes my liver quiver. <laughs> Say this along with me, praise God. I don't care if it's on a tablet, phone, whatever it is. But say it with me. This is my Bible. The Bible is God speaking to me. And the Bible is the truth. It teaches me what to believe. And what and how to think. And how to live. And how to have victory. And also in it is the path to eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the word this morning. It is a lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We look for you to lead, to guide, to uplift, to open our understanding even more. We're open to whatever gives graces, anointings, manifestations, or demonstrations you would give us today. And Lord, we thank you for it and give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone in agreement with this prayer said... Amen. Amen. As you see, to open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, please. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Since you have been in prayer for 21 days, and then, of course, uh, ending up with, uh, of course, a wonderful Friday night, but I feel the Lord is leading me to uh, add on to what you've been doing the last 21 days. So we see here in verse 10, praise God. It says, finally, my brother, we know you don't start a conversation with the word finally. Okay, amen. And so obviously you'd have to read some things ahead of it, which we don't have time to do. But the Apostle Paul with the church at Ephesus, is his closing statements to this church. He's been talking to them for five chapters, and he's ending up. So he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. The New Testament is translated from the Greek, because Greek was the business language of the day. And that word strong is indominal. That means, praise God, empower yourself. The understood subject of this sentence is you do this. Praise God. Too often today, people don't want to do stuff. They want stuff handed to them. Okay, amen. But here he's saying, praise God. He said, indominal, in other words, you be strong in the Lord and in the power. That word is kratos, the strength. Of his might, iskus, his supernatural ability. So what he said was, he said, brethren, he said, empower yourself in the supreme authority in, praise God, the strength of his supernatural ability. Now, he wouldn't tell you to do that unless you could do that. So you can hook up and be empowered with his supernatural ability. Praise God. You can be empowered with his strength. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, give me three hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, then verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God. I want you to notice that word whole means all of it because you can put on parts of it. But he said put on the armor of God. And the, person, the reason for armor is to do what? Protect you. Amen. But again, he told you, you do this. You pray and ask God to do it. And God said, no. You put it on and we will cover it because the armor that he's talking about here is prayer armor. Amen. And why prayer? Well, see, God moves in the earth only 
because someone here asked it. Men have authority in the earth. God gave us authority while we are here. And so if we want something to God, God do something in the earth, he said, ask me. Seek me, you'll find. Not nah, that door will be open. But you got to ask. Amen. So he says here, then put on that whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Now, that word stand, praise God, his stand me means you might be able to continue and you might be able to hold up against. Why? Because there's an assault coming against you. If you live here on earth long enough, you understand there are things that come against you that are not cool. You live long enough, you're going to have some tests, some trials, some issues, things come your way, some assaults. And Jesus said in John 10, 10, he called Satan a thief. He said he comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. And he sure wants to destroy you because when he sees you, how I many you are born again? He considers you to be cancer. See? And that you spread. And that you're going to affect others. So he's got to stop you now and try and shut your mouth. But here, Paul then begins to tell them what to do to make sure Satan would not be able to do it. So he says, put on the whole arm of God that you may stand, praise God, or be able to continue, hold up. And that next word is the word against. That's the word pros. That's face to face. That you can come up against the enemy face to face. You don't have to get behind a wall. You, you don't need no cover or concealment. You just come up face to face against it, right? So, so that you can come up pros against the wiles. That word wiles means strategies because Satan's been scheming all the time to take you down, take your family down, take your life down, take your health from you, take your money from you. He's been trying to do it because he hates your guts. You are made in the very image and likeness of God. Hallelujah. He wants you dead. And if he can't kill you, then he wants to assault you all that he can. But fortunately, Paul is going to tell us what to do to make sure that we win at the end. Anybody here like to win? Okay, amen. All right, so then he goes on, he says here, put on then all of that armor so you, so you can hold up against the strategies of the devil, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So our problem is not white folks, red folks, brown folks, yellow folks, Republican folk, Democratic folk, rich folk, poor folk. Our problem is not flesh and blood. Your mother-in-law is not your problem. I didn't say she wasn't a problem, but... But, but what the Bible says, she, she is not your problem. You know, you know what I'm saying? In fact, and he goes on to say, but instead, yeah, principalities, powers, ex ecstasy, authorities, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual weakness in high places, they are demon spirits arrayed against you at different levels. There are those that sit over whole cities. And then, all, then there are those that are all the way down to individually against you. Amen. So he tells you that's what your problem is. Now, Satan will use people, however. Okay, amen. He will use people to come at you later in a minute. We'll talk about that. He goes on to say here in verse 13, so, so wherefore take unto you all of the armor, the full armor of God, not part of it, that you may resist in that evil day. What's the evil day? The evil day is the hurtful day. That's the day when tests and trials, that's the day when you get the bad medical report, that's the day when they told you you were broke, that's the day when your job got taken from you, that's the day when people assaulted you, that's the day when all these things happened, the day of hurt. See, being able to stand in the hurtful day, I mean, all kind of people can stand where everything's going great. Amen. I've been in the ministry 50 years. You know what I've seen in 50 years? Okay, I've seen all kind of Christians, you know, and they love God and they be up here, you know, he reigns, they be singing, they be all of that, you know, and praising God and all that until, wham, until they get smacked upside the head, right? And real problems come their way. And then all of a sudden, I'm not so sure about this God thing. I'm not so sure about church. I, I'm not so sure about this word of God. Word. I don't know about this. And they just fall apart. I mean, even during this uh, pandemic thing that you saw happen, I saw people who I thought, sure, I thought they were strong. And I saw them find out they were as wet and as weak as water. Now, are you listening to me? Praise God. Now, come on, give me three hallelujahs, somebody. 
You know, I don't like no quiet churches. You know that now. I don't like no quiet churches. Praise the Lord. And I know this one. I used to pastor this church when I opened it. Praise God. It wasn't quiet then. I mean, Sean, you didn't let them get quiet now. Did you? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Praise God. Amen. So take upon you the whole arm of God that you may resist in that hurtful day, having done all to stand. Now, the word done here means overcome in the Greek. So you have overcome already all. In other words, Jesus already paid the price for you. He already beat the devil. He already defeated him. He already took care of poverty, sickness, and death. All you got to do is do what he told you to do. You put on the armor. You do the things that you're supposed to do, but the enemy, his power has been broken. Hallelujah. 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose was the Son of God came to do what? To destroy the works of the devil. That word destroy doesn't mean obliterate. It means to loosen. Luo is the Greek word. It means to loosen it. In other words, Satan once had you like that, but now he don't have it like that anymore. Okay. Amen. The grip has been broken, but you got to finish the deal. Are you listening to me? Praise God. All right. So he says here. So having overcome it all, stand therefore. Stand what? In your victory. Tell three people, I, we got victory. Excuse the English teachers in here about the God, but it feels better to say God didn't have. Okay. We got the victory. Amen. So he says, so having overcome all, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. So the, the loins, he's talking about having the belt to hold your pants up. Okay, amen. Guys, we understand. You ain't taking your belt off, are you, son? <laughs> Keep your belt on. Okay. <laughs> If I took my belt off right now, it would be a revelation. <laughs> in other words, in other words, belts are important. Belts hold up your clothes and equipment, right? Okay, amen. So what he says here, the very first thing, have your loins. Amen. Or have your belt with the belt of truth fastened. Now, Jesus said in John 17, 17, thy word is truth, which is why first thing we do. This is our Bible. The, God, the Bible is God speaking to us. The Bible is the truth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved by what I believe. I believe the truth. And I believe the one who put forth the truth, God Almighty. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Well, what else about truth? Well, turn to Psalm chapter 1. Amen. I'm coming right back to Ephesians. I'm obviously not done. But Psalm chapter 1, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He says in verse 1, bless. You know, the word bless means happy to be envied. It's the man that walked down in the counsel of the ungodly. No, we don't listen to ungodly folk. No stands in the way of sinner. Nope, we ain't dealing with him either. No sit up in the seat of the scoffer. Nah, mm -mm. But his delight, that blessed man, his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's the word of God. That's the truth. In his law, does he meditate day and night? The meditation of the word is extremely important, and you have to do this every day. You should not leave the house unless you meditate the word that day. Amen. The word of God is all powerful. Hallelujah. But see, meditation of the word, I mean, you've been meditating all your life. Maybe not the word of God, but you've been meditating all your life. You've been thinking on something and chewing on it and thinking about it and talking to yourself about it and all that. Amen. So when that meditation is talking to yourself, y'all talk to yourself. Okay. You be looking in the mirror and saying, oh my God. <laughs> right? Get up in the morning. Amen. But you would, to meditate the word is to think about, think about, well, how do I actually do this? It's, it, now, it said walk by faith, but how you do it? 
It says to do this, but how you do it? To meditate, because meditation will give you revelation. So when you think of something long enough, eventually, praise God, it opens up to you, eventually. Now you, now, you might have to take some real time with this, but eventually, that's the way the Word of God is, too. The Word of God is an acquired taste, but in it, praise God, is absolute gold. Okay, amen? But you got to dig to get it. You got to meditate it, but when you meditate it, man, you start meditating what it said about your health. And they tell you, you got to die, and you got to die in the next six months. They said, no, the word said with long life, he's satisfied. Yeah, you start meditating on long life, praise God. Amen. My limbs are strong. My brain is strong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You start speaking against the lie that Satan brought you, you do it with the truth of the word of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, now, what else about that man? That man, if he meditates the word day and night, notice how often, in other words, this is a constant thing he does all the time. He's driving the car meditating. He's in college, man, meditating between classes, man. He's meditating the word, brother. Amen. He's focused, in other words. He's focused on God's way. Note what he'll be. He'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Man, a tree planted by the next door to a river has roots that are deeper underground than you see above ground. And if you, you had a hurricane, it can blow cars over and all kinds of things. There'll be this one tree for some reason still standing here. I tell you why, the roots are so deep, it can stand whatever wind or waves comes against it. That's this man. He'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water. Can't be blown over by the things that Satan tried to come up against you with. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Not only that, he will bring forth his production in his time. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he does shall. 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 It may take a little while sometime, but honey, I know the outcome. The outcome is going to be, I'm going to prosper. I'm going to win. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Well, tell three people, we meditate the word and we win all the time. Tell them. We win. Yeah, we win. We win. So first thing he told you was, he said, I want you to keep that belt on. Don't take your belt off and don't expose yourself. Amen. What's holding everything up is the word. Praise the Lord. And it's no wonder during that pandemic, the first thing Satan tried to do was shut the door of the churches. Because he understood if they don't have that word, man, they, they, can't, they can't stand up. Hallelujah. So I sued the governor in my state. I did. I said, you ain't closing my church, you nuts. The casinos could stay open, all the good stuff. You tell me, and the church had to close. I said, no. So I sued the governor and I sued the state. And they, they said, okay. Amen. The word is truth. Amen. They wasn't taking my belt. No. Then he said, had on, not only have that truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness, right standing with God. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be manufactured as God's righteousness. Now, you may not feel righteous. You may not look righteous. But see, why you got to have this breastplate of righteousness? Because Satan, when you try to pray and you start to, start to believe God, and Satan, he'll, he'll say, yeah, but you remember who you are. Remember what you did. Remember your background. Oh, last week you did X, Y, Z. God not going to hear you. The question is, what did you do? 1 John 1, 9 was also written to Christians. It said that we were homo homologio. If we would acknowledge our sin to God, not to everybody else. Your sin is not everybody else's business. Right? But if you acknowledge your sin to God, he is faithful. He can be counted on and trust it to forgive you of your sin. Amen. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. When, well, if you've been cleansed from all un unrighteousness, what do you do? Drop the un. Right standing with God again. And when Satan comes to you and says, no, there's no sense in you praying, 
no sense in you praying and asking God for this to happen in your life. It ain't going to happen because you are such and such and you did such and such. But because you have on this breastplate of righteousness, you say, "Uh uh-uh, God has made me righteous. Amen. That just bounce off you. That is necessary to operate in faith. If you don't have this, you can't walk in faith. Satan will talk you out of it. 23, it says, when you pray, believe you receive and you shall have. Okay, 20 24. 23 says, you speak to the mountain without doubt it'll move. Only way you can operate without doubt is that you have this on. You know, despite whatever the past was, the past don't matter anymore. Right? Don't matter anymore. In fact, God says, I take your sin and throw it as far away as the east is from the west and have no more remembrance of it. If God won't remember it, who are you to remember about it? Stop going back to God about something in the past. He said, what are you talking about? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he said, cover your feet. Put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. Irene is the Greek word there. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. Amen. Your walk should be one filled with the peace of God. Now here in 2 Peter chapter 1, we read verse 2. It says, grace. Grace, and if you boil it all down, I don't have time to treat it. I got a book on it, but I forgot to even say anything about the books. But grace is actually the manifestation of Holy Ghost power. But then it says grace and peace is multiplied. I love the word multiplication. I like multiplication. Four plus four is eight, but four times four, yeah. Right, you get acceleration. This is a year of acceleration and demonstration. Hallelujah. Well, grace and peace, peace is multiplied exponentially. How? Through epic gnosis, knowledge of God. The more you know about God the Father, which is in the Bible, and Jesus the Son in the Bible, the more you know, know about him, the easier it is for you to relax. I know he got it because I know who he is. See, that happens because you know of character. I mean, I, I made this man pastor of this church. I gave him this church. And you know why I did it? Because I know his character. Now, when you know somebody's character, see, I know his character. I say, I believe... I believe that young man, as he was then, I mean, he's still young. He has joined me, however. <laughs> I used to have a big old fro, you know, all of that. All of a sudden, that ran away. So. I'm his daddy, so I guess same thing. DNA, I guess same thing happened to him. I mean, it's talking about spiritual daddy, praise God. Amen. Amen now. <laughs> But I took this young man, and after I opened this church and pastored for a little while, and then I knew it was time for me to move on, plant some more churches, and I'm praying about who to bring out here. One thing I knew about him, I believe that his character was such that I wouldn't have to come out here and get him in 10 years and put somebody else in because he messed it up. I believe that he was trustworthy and that I wouldn't have to be concerned about this church out here. I can go and do other stuff. Amen. I could relax. He's proven me to be true. You know, I, I have no concerns about what's going on in this church at all. I mean, I just don't have no concerns about it. I mean, I don't bother them at all. Amen. Just go ahead and do what you need to do. Whatever. If I can help, you know, let me know. Okay. I mean, praise God. Amen. Amen. That's a character thing. That's what he's talking about. See, he said God's power, the Holy Ghost, grace is able to work in exponentially. And you, be, you become full of peace because you know God's character. You know, God's not the one trying to hurt me. God's not the one killing me. God's not the one. That, I mean, he's on my side. Psalm 118, 6. The Lord is on my side. What can man do unto me? Hallelujah. You relax. See, if you are not relaxed, even though you're getting hit, it's because you don't trust him. 
Not yet. You don't trust them yet. You kind of like, I don't know, Lord. I mean, wait, what's going on to me? Are you here? <laughs> Where are you, Lord? You don't, yeah, I'm, uh, he going, you don't trust me at all, do you? Because if you did trust him, you would go, I know I got you. Uh, I know you got me. I may not know how yet. I may not be able to see it yet, but I know who you are. I know your character, and I know you love me, and I love you, and I know what's going to happen. So when we go back to Ephesians, see, so now we, we kind of get what he's talking about. Boy, that clock is fast. <laughs> God almighty. Oof. <laughs> Amen. Cover your feet with peace. Amen. Above all. Now, the word above here in the Greek, because the New Testament translates from Greek, the word above all means out in front of all. In other words, the first thing Satan should encounter when he comes to mess with you, first thing he should run into is this. He should run into the shield of faith. Now, the word uh, faith is the Greek word pistis. It's the name of my Bible school. He's a graduate. Yeah, he's one of my grads. Pistis means trust, confidence, belief, reliance, assurance. By the way, unlike him where he had to physically go to school in Detroit, you can now go to my school online. So you can do it in Arizona and sit there and drink your lattes. I mean, okay, amen. You can do it today. But know what he said here. Praise God. Out in front of all, take the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to extinguish, the word quench, quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Yes, Say so you can stop them. How? Well, what are the fiery darts? I'll tell you where you can find this. I don't have enough time to walk you through it. I wish I did, but, I, but I'll tell you where you can find it. You can find it in Mark chapter 4. Jesus, in his parable, the parable of the sower, uh, amen, Jesus tells how everything works in one parable. And the word of God is the issue. So the word of God was first brought to that seed was sown, and that man had that seed go to the side of the, side of the road. See, the seed of the words wound up on the side of the road because he didn't receive what he heard. Satan so didn't even have to work. The second one was, praise God, they also heard the word, seed of the word came, and then they shouted when they heard it. They began to dance and praise God like some of y'all was doing. They was praising God about how good the word is, amen. And then it says Satan brought affliction. Talipsis is the word. Affliction, which means trouble, test, trial, pain. Circumstances that are negative, what that is. Brought some tough negative circumstances. And then he followed that up with, praise God, with persecution. Well, the first one, affliction, is circumstance. Affliction is when Satan uses people to bring about the circumstance. Yeah, amen? Particularly people who are close to you. I mean, there's, there's some people, they did, if they did stuff to you, you don't know them. When it's somebody who is your ace, boom, coom, number one, somebody... <laughs> Somebody who is your dog, man. I mean, somebody, somebody you love, somebody you, and that's the person that Satan used to cut you? That one hurts. And don't, and don't you think that Satan don't use Christians? You better believe he uses Christians. Uh, he'll use a tongue talking filled with the Holy Ghost. Got a mighty burning fire on the way to heaven and so glad. He'll use one of them on you. You see, so you can't put your trust in men. You have to put your trust in God. So those are the fiery darts, affliction, persecution. The next one is cares of this world. That word, the care, actually means distraction, marimna. One of those means it's distraction. Satan will use a distraction to get you away from the word. The distraction, the distraction might look like this. Or the distraction might look like this. But, but he'll, he'll use whatever kind of distraction to soak up your meditation time, word time, get you away from the church time. Whatever kind of distraction he can use, uh, amen, the power game didn't work. The afflictions and persecution didn't work. So let me, try, let me try another way. Let me go this way and let me find a shiny object and distract you from the word of God with that. Amen. 
You also see in Mark chapter 4, he said, affliction, persecution, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches. He didn't say riches. He said being deceived by them. What's a deceived person with riches? Thinking if I just had, if I just had more money, everything would be all right. If I was a millionaire, everything would be all right. If I was a billionaire, everything would be all right. Well, I know people like that. Okay, amen? Messed up. Y'all so close to Hollywood, y'all to see it all the time. Hey, all that money, boy, and talking about jack up. Life is a mess. Money, money will not fix your problems. I'm not saying money is bad. Money is neutral. Money is neutral. It's not good. It's not bad. It depends on what you attach to it. Now, if you attach something other than the word of God to it, you got problems coming with it. Which I ain't got time to go teach you on that one, but there's a whole, there's a whole lot of stuff. So it was affliction, persecution, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches. The last one was lust of other things. And lust of other things, lust is an inordinate strong desire. In other words, you just got to have something. You don't have to have nothing but Jesus. Yeah, amen? Everything else can be moved one way or the other. Now, so let's go back to the Ephesians chapter 6. Good God. I think this clock is faster than the first one. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Amen. So you will extinguish all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take that helmet of defense, that word salvation, praise God, soteria. It's that word defense, praise God. Amen. Take the helmet of defense and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The helmet of defense is because you have been meditating the word, you know you are what? You are the head and not the tail. I think I like that first group more than y'all. <laughs> that first group, man, they were telling me, amen, praise the Lord, glory to God, praise the bishop. Y'all just sitting there like. <laughs> the group behind, behind them going, I'll do y'all too. Y'all still ain't changed. I'm telling you, you still ain't changed. <laughs> Yeah. Or do I have to do it the old way they used to do in the old churches I came up in? The old black churches I used to come up in. We had to say, the Lord knows you're down and said it. Oh, Lord. And, uh, do I have to go there? All right, thank you. Now, I can go there now if I have to now, because I, I still know how to do that if I had to. I'm just kidding, though. Man. <laughs> You're the head and not the tail, but then notice here, the hem of the self and the sword of the spirit. Now, they, I believe the Amplified says, that's the sword which the spirit uses, wheels, actually it's the word, they use, which the spirit wheels or uses, amen, which is the rhema, spoken word of God. Now, we don't say swords today. We don't fight with swords. So he would say it differently today. He would say, pick up your Glock 19. <laughs> get your nine mil out, right? And the Holy Ghost will direct your shots. <laughs> right? See, he said, take the sword with the Spirit. Notice, is the Spirit, the Holy Ghost then is using your words entangled with the Word of God so that you can fill him with holes. Right? Yeah, we don't do swords no more. We don't do that. Now, now we do that. You said, you said what? Right? You're shooting with the bullets of, of the word of God until you put some holes in that dude, and that dude get out of dodge. You understand? But you see, you got to have some bullets in the gun. If you ain't got no word in you, how many of y'all old enough to remember the Twinkie? How many of y'all don't know what in the world I'm talking about by Twinkie? Yeah, a few, not too many. There used to be something that they make called Twinkie. We used to eat. Right? Inside of this uh, kind of yellowish brown thing was cream on the inside, right? Amen. And what would happen if you squeezed the Twinkie too hard? Stuff would go all over the place, right? Amen. In other words, whatever's in is what's going to come out. 
Now, you ain't been meditating that word. You ain't put on that belt of truth. You ain't been doing what I'm talking about. When you get squeezed with affliction and persecution, what will come out will be what? HGTV. Football come out. As the stomach turns, right? All my illegitimate children and all the other kind of stuff you've been watching. That's what will come out instead of the word. And there ain't no, no bullets in the gun. Just be click, click, click. The loudest sound in the world when you need it to go bang is click. <laughs> you got to be full up of the word of God, which is the reason why you can't just come on Sunday morning. You got to spend time yourself every day. <laughs> hey Amen. How many drink coffee? How many drink coffee in the morning? Yeah, some of y'all can't live without that coffee. I mean, if you don't get your coffee in the morning, the world better look out. I'm married to a woman, man. She drinks so much coffee, man. She should be as black as my shoes, man. She, she drinks so much coffee. I mean, she got a sign in our house above the coffee, coffee machine that says, I drink coffee for your protection. <laughs> that girl going to get her coffee in the morning, let me tell you. And that's the way you should be about the word of God. I cannot leave the house because I will not be right if I ain't meditated some word today before I stepped out of that house so that the Holy Ghost can direct you and then when the enemy tries to come around the corner, you can say, the word said. Right? I got eight minutes, good Lord. All right, let's just. Take the sword of the spirit. Note here, and then this is how you know this is it. Praying always with all prayer. There are many different types of prayer. Prayer of supplication, prayer of agreement. Many of the different types of prayer. So it depends on which one for the right situation. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. Now, that Greek word for supplication, desis, that means exact petition. Okay. This is not general. The first one, all prayer, all manner of prayer, was more general. This is exactly praying. I wrote a book, praise God, about this very thing. Praying with specifics. It's the name of my book. Ex praying exactly. It takes me 20 minutes, amen, every day to pray just the things I know to pray exactly. It takes me 20 minutes a day to at least do that before I even get over to the other side of that. And the other side of that is praying in the spirit. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Praise God. At least I think they can do that one. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. Come on, come on. <laughs> Gee whiz. 1 Corinthians 14. Oh, okay. <laughs> says that when you pray. Oh, there you go. All right. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue doesn't speak unto men, but unto God. No man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries. The word mysteries means secret talk. So the person that prays in the Holy Ghost is praying secret talk. What things? Things Satan don't know about. Things you may not know about. God knows the future. See, first you pray what you do know. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, he said, I pray with the spirit and the understanding. So it takes me 20 minutes just to pray my understanding. Then you get over there to praying in the spirit. Romans 8, 28, people love this verse. All things work together for the good of them that love God. No, wait a minute. You got to read 8, 27, 8, 26. It works for them who pray in other tongues and are called where they're supposed to be, doing what they're supposed to do. Then all things cooperate for the benefit of those who love God. And Jesus said, the person that loves God does my commands. Right? Those called, that were called, they're appointed to their intention. Amen? He's prospering because the Lord told me this is where this young man should be. Amen? That's his calling here. So I've not bothered him. I left him here. So he's not the, I've had him in other places. I had him in Ohio for a while. Lord. <laughs> we won't even talk about that, but all right. But. But, you know, but when I sent him out here, the Lord, he told me. The Lord told him, he said, welcome to your homes. 
See, where are you called to be? You understand? So that verse refers to that. I ain't got time to go further with that. I got to finish this. All right. Praying always with all manner of prayer and definite requests in the spirit or in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, and watching thereunto with all persistency and supplication for all saints. And Paul said, pray for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Last one. Turn to 1 Corinthians 14. Chapter 12, rather. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So Paul said, I need you to pray for me. How many of y'all pray for your pastor? There's even, there's even more hands that didn't get go up. And this little wonder. Uh, amen. Oh, but y'all don't pray for your pastor. You can even, don't you know that that's the man supposed to feed you the word of God? I think not only, not only should you pray for your pastor, you should be praying for his pastor. That would be me. <laughs> and how should I pray? All right. Here, let's read it. First Corinthians chapter 14, give me verse 28. Amen. All right, they on it now. <laughs> and God has said something in the church. First apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, miracles, the gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. Usually the word diversity means differences. But that's not what that word means actually in the Greek. Amen. That word there, diversity, praise the Lord, means to be born of or offspring of Tongue, genos, it's the Greek word. Amen. In other words, how people wind up in their callings is because they pray in tongues a lot. And how you pray for your minister, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, is that particularly, not only do you just pray for the things you see, I mean, there are things that you, you may pray, you know, that you see. I mean, you might be praying, you know, that the pastor grows some more hair. <laughs> Amen. But you pray in the spirit because the Holy Ghost really knows what's going on with him. The Holy Ghost really knows what's, what Erica is having to put up with him. The Holy Ghost knows what the kids are having to deal with with him. The Holy, the Holy Ghost knows about their financial situation. The Holy Ghost knows about all sorts of stuff. He knows secret things. That's why praying in tongues is big. It's really big. And God will reward you for it in verse 4, because verse 4 says that when you pray in other tongues, you build your own self up spiritually. So God says, now I'm going to build you up and reward you for doing that while you allowing me to help him. Okay, amen. And so, praise God, prayer is vitally important because God moves in the earth because you ask him. Satan knows it. So he will do everything he can to keep you from doing that. You can't get up out of bed. The refrigerator breaks down. Your girlfriend calls you just as about time you get ready to pray. He will do, he'll hit you with sickness and disease. He'll do anything because he knows if God gets operative in the earth because you ask him, he can't stand up against God's power. So he will do any and everything to keep you from spending that prayer time. Most important thing you can do is put the word in you and then, praise God, pray that word out and then get over to the Holy Ghost and pray in the spirit with that. Amen. And when you attack the devil, you will always have bullets in your magazine. Okay, amen. Hallelujah. Stand with me, please. Amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God made it so simple that a two-year-old could do it. All you got to do is pray and ask him to come in your heart. Amen. So bow your head with me and close your eyes for a moment and pray this with me. If you want to be born again, particularly, pray this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe he did hang on the cross. I believe he carried my sins. I believe he died on that cross and was put in the grave. But I believe he's risen. He's alive now. Come unto my heart. I accept you as my Savior. 
and master of my life. Thank you, Lord. Heaven is my home. You are my Lord. Hallelujah. Like number, there we go. How many of y'all got something out of the word today? Amen. Praise God. You know, I'm just uh, extremely grateful, you know, the, the way that I was raised, raised in the things of God. There are certain, certain teachings, certain principles I think have, have helped me to stay strong throughout the years. Uh, one of them was the teaching on faith. Uh, I, I can't say enough how grateful I am that I was taught about what faith actually is. Another one is the authority of the believer. Uh, in particular because I think believers settle for a lot of stuff that they don't have to. And part of it is just because they don't know the authority that they've been given uh, in Christ Jesus. And so uh, Bishop has uh, some books. One of the books that he has is The Authority of the Righteous. You know, Proverbs tells us when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. And so I encourage you to, to uh, you can go online. They'll bring the information up on the screen uh, about where you can actually go to find all of these materials. But I would encourage you to get that, the authority of, of the righteous. I think that believers suffer through things they don't necessarily need to because they don't know who they are and they don't know what they have a right to. Uh, I think one of my favorites is five elements of faith. Uh, man, if you can get these five things on the inside of you, he talked a little bit about it today. Uh, it will really help you to stand in faith until you see 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold re return on the word that has been sown on the inside of your heart. Uh, I, going back to something that Bishop had said during the message, uh, I, I really believe with all of my heart that one of the reasons why my family is blessed is because we have stewarded the revelation of why we were sent here years ago. Uh, see, the longer you can keep the seed in the ground, the more richer the fruit becomes every single year. And I asked the Lord one time, I said, Lord, you could have sent me to a million different ministries. Why did you send me to Word of Faith? And the Lord gave me Genesis chapter 26. He said, because there was room for you there. And I plugged in at a time when his vision was, was to plant works in other states, which means that I had to grow fast to be able to keep up with the vision that was on the inside of his heart. See, God connects us as believers. Your calling is not just about your calling. Your calling is connected to somebody else's calling. And most times, God will see how faithful you are with somebody else's stuff to determine whether or not you are ready for what it is that he has for you and for your family. Man, I tell you, there was some gold given today. Uh, they've got a book uh, called Marriage and Family. It's by Pastor Deborah Butler, we actually went through this when I was in Bible school. Uh, so we encourage you to grab a hold of that one. They've also got another family book, Home Improvement. I remember this one. This was good. They go through all types of stuff, uh, including the stuff that we love to talk about as married couples, like sex. So uh, avail, you avail yourself to that. It would be a blessing. And then you've got the power of grace. You know, one of the things that I love is um, Jesus' is, ministry, he, the Bible tells us he was full of grace and he was full of truth. He didn't shy away from saying the tough things. He was truthful, but he also was very graceful in how he delivered that truth to other people. And I mean, you know, we need truth and we need grace to do what it is that God has placed us here on the earth to do. So you can go on, on their website. Uh, he is, he, Bishop and Pastor Deborah have a, a gazillion other books and other resources that are available. This is one of the ways that I grew as a, as a, as a Christian in the earlier days is not only listening to the Sunday message, but picking up some of these old materials. Because some of you all just came to FCC like last week. Would you know how many sermons have been preached? You know how many services we have had? you got a lot of binge watching to do to catch up, amen, with where we are today. And listen to me, just because a sermon is old doesn't mean that it's still not transformative. So I would encourage you. Because there are people all around this world that have been trained uh, by the butlers and, and I would encourage you to avail yourself to these materials. They will enrich your faith. They will starve your doubts and uh, they will transform your life forever. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, listen, when we dismiss the service, if you need prayer for anything, uh, he talked today about being filled with the Holy Ghost. And I know there's, a, there's so many different beliefs out, out here today about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and people being, being uh, praying with other tongues. But I, I'm going to just be honest with you. This is one of those gifts that has enriched my life in every way possible. Because as a human being, it's just some things we don't know 
how to pray for. We don't have the vocabulary for it. How do you pray for a nation that you've never been in before? For a people that live there that you've never met before? Well, you may not know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit does. So if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, when we dismiss the service, come on down front. We're going to have people down front who will be available to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit for you, uh, to you. If you are, are, are need prayer for anything else, they will also be available to pray uh, in Jesus' name. If you're a first-time visitor, first-time guest, we want to thank you for coming. If you didn't get a chance to stop by our guest experience tent on your way in, please make sure you stop by on your way out. We've got some light refreshments, some snacks, some people from our team who want to meet you, greet you, and answer any questions uh, that you might have. All right, well, listen, uh, we've come to the end of the service. Thank you for those of you that are tuned in online for hanging out with us today. Thank you for those that are here in the building. I hope you got something today that feeds your faith and causes you to put some holes in the enemy's chest throughout the rest of this week today. Come on, somebody. Amen. Well, we love you today with the love of the Lord, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. God bless you today. Go Lions. You are dismissed.